Hi, thanks for checking out this video. It's going to be a quick tutorial about how to set up a vocoder and kind of turn it into a whole like sound design synth kind of weird thing. I like to use it for just kind of scary voices or creepy child voices or really angry kind of like dragon voices and stuff like that. Just kind of the typical things you would think it'd be used for and has been used for for years. So what I've got here is the vocoder already in place and the synthesizer to which it's being sent. And we're going to recreate it. So I'm going to explain the, spark, uh, explain the parts and then go and add them and show you the tweaks that I make. It's nothing fancy. First thing is uh, there's a compressor in the chain to compress the sound coming out of the mic. You could do this with hardware if you're already set up to do that. Uh, the next thing is the actual vocoder. I use a grain delay. This adds that really kind of creepy effect to everything. Then there's a ping pong delay to just add to the ambience. Uh, the forest floor, even though it's a reverb, I use it primarily for this freeze function right down here. And then a limiter so you can get really loud and never blow the speakers. So let's go next door and set it up. I just use the typical Ableton uh, stuff that's available. Oh, I should have cleaned this up before I got started. Um, first thing, well, there's your vocoder. Let's just drag him in. Doesn't have to be in a particular order because if you use Ableton, you know you can place things on either side of other instruments that you already have in there. And let's go to the, um, well, we do want an audio effect. Where are the compressors? You notice how everything is alphabetically upside down? That kind of drives me crazy. I've learned a way around that, and I'll show you in a minute, but apparently it doesn't keep. Here's the compressor. Okay, we got the vocoder. Now we need a ping pong delay. There it is. Actually, we need the grain delay before that, don't we? One thing they also have done is they haven't. Uh, they didn't organize delays and then like a folder of filter, ping pong, grain, and stuff like that. You can do that. I've gotten used to it this way now. I'm a little lazy. And now the limiter. Start with the limiter since we're here. It always defaults to negative uh, 0.3, which is what I like. So you really don't have to do anything. So we're not starting with anything. Ping pong, I like setting it at 2. Um, it just kind of creates that uh, that nice ping pong effect without it being so distant that there's so much pre-delay um, that you kind of get out of time with things. If you set it to 16, it gets really kind of lengthy. As for the grain delay, the only things I mess with are spray and pitch and the vocoder. Now, we've got this chain and we got to make it work. So what you have to do is, in your audio track, we've created this vocoder chain. We can call it vocoder or something. And then we have to send that to a synth. So over here, you have to place a synth. The easiest synth to uh, set up in Ableton is really just kind of the analog synth. Drag it down there. Things that you're going to choose here, as you can see in analog, there are a lot of different options. Um, I like the strings sound for vocoder, but you could use all kinds of different stuff, pads. Basically, leads are just going to have a really short um, ADSR in the amplifier. And that's not going to be helpful because when you're doing a vocoder, you need to lengthen these things out so that it can have a note to carry your voice on. The shorter the note, the less voice it can carry. Okay, so I'm getting rid of this um, fade in ad here for the attack. I really don't like the way that sounds. It's a little better. It's enough to carry a voice. It's a little bit of a slow attack. Okay, good enough. Now, once you have the synth in here... Oh, I see I selected weeping strings for mine, which is somewhere else um, you can now turn it off you don't need it anymore so now I'm hitting MIDI notes and you don't hear anything but you have to make sure you set to monitor in in the vocoder this is a very important spot right here because what you're saying is I want to get a signal from my mic externally and I want to send the audio over 
to this synthesizer right here, the strings that we already set up. It's right here. Since I'm getting the audio from my mic, I need to also set up my audio to receive from my mic. And now here it is. So now, as you can see, the uh, compressor's reacting. The vocoder is hearing things. You can hear the vocoder. Uh, if I take the dry wet all the way down here, you're going to hear two of me. So I'll turn off the original. And now, you're only hearing this vocoder, these two together right here. Okay, now if you want to create a synth out of this, it's really easy. Select the first one. Select the last one, do an Apple key. It creates a group, basically, but in the, the instrument panel here, it creates what's called an instrument. You can name it anything you want, if I can get this uh, expanded here. Okay, and what's cool about an instrument is also it comes with all these knobs. I like to attach um, just a few things to these knobs. I, well, who am I kidding? I, I use all of them all. And the way you do that is hit this map mode button, select something that you want to be there. Uh, in the case of the vocoder, I'm going to start with the dry and wet. I collected, uh, clicked dry and wet over here. I map it over here. The next thing I want is the formant control because this allows you to sound like a child or a really demony sound. I'll put that one here. Next along the line is the grain delay. This one gets mapped here. Then you switch to pitch. And this one gets mapped here. There we go. Now we can come back to what we sound like. When you uh, map these knobs, they go to the default of where these virtual knobs are already set. So if you need something like I've got here that needs to be at like 50%, which they're calling zero, the minute it gets mapped, if the knob's already at all the way at zero, true zero on the knob, then it flips down to zero. So that causes some annoyance. All right, for the ping pong, we're going to add the um, uh, this control here, the beat delay, and the dry and wet is going to be here. And then I did something on mine. Let me go back and check. Oh, I forgot to add the reverb, the forest floor. I knew I was forgetting something. Which is kind of cool because I'll show you how to just add it to this instrument already. I like forest floor because it's really ambient. It doesn't... Um, it doesn't overweigh a signal with too much reverb. The best thing about it is that you have that freeze effect and it works really well on the forest floor kind of instrument. As you can see with this yellow line, I'm going to place it between ping pong and limiter. And there it is. Take that dry wet down, which is obviously what I'm going to control. Uh, let's go back to map mode. Go down here to dry wet. Place it here. And the next one is that freeze control right there. We're going to on off at. Okay. Now we're attached. You're done, basically. You can uh, save this anywhere you want. Let me show you really quickly how to clean up the order in a folder. As you can see, I'm upside down here. Uh, what you do is, this sounds dumb. <laughs> Trust me, this is not going to work in the obvious way. You hit the caret. Everything looks good, right? Except now these are out of order. So you have to close the folder then and hit it again. And now these are in order and those are in order. Okay, let me show you how to save. Pretty simple. But there's a trick. It's going to put it in some random place. I haven't figured it out. It's an instrument, so it's going to put it it's not going to put it in audio effects. It's going to put it over here in instruments, but it doesn't put it in any kind of like folder or anything. And as you can see, I have uh in my instrument racks, I have a folder. Oh, it's upside down again. 
Er. <laughs> Why is drum racks before analog? Oh, you drive me crazy. All right, instrument racks. I have a folder here for my stuff. <laughs> Upside down again. This video has become an obsession, my obsession with keeping things alphabetical. Here's my Moontech Rex. Um, it's not going to put it there. I can select it. I can open it. And I'll hit save. And it didn't put it there. So we're just going to call it Vocoda Demo. You got to let it save where it's going to save. Hit enter. Then you take it. And you go up to where you want to put it, put it in there, close it. Open it from here. Now, any adjustments you make, like let's say this, you save it, it's going to save it in the correct place. It creates a double because it thinks you might want to change its name. You hit enter. It's going to say, do you want to replace it? You hit yeah. And now you're back. There's a couple of tips on how to get around this annoying sort or and the saving to weird locations. But I'm showing you something in Ableton because I love Ableton and I deal with those things who cares about them. They're so small in comparison to what you can do creatively in Ableton. Let's go over to the one I already had built before and I'll show you how it works. Here we go with a little demonstration. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in, and you can see it here on the knobs, I'm going to bring in the vocoder. As I bring in the vocoder, you won't hear anything from me Although I'll be saying stuff until I hold down a key on the keyboard. Now you can hear something. Okay, I'm running the vocoder. Now I'm going to show you a little trick about the vocoder. Bands. Um, you can consider this end of the bands 1970s and this end 2012. Or 2011, I guess, technically, when this came out. Or was it 2010? Anyway, it doesn't matter. So this is going to sound really like old school. I'll give you a demo. It breaks up. It sounds icky. Um, but it's very useful, actually. I apologize for saying icky. It's got a great effect if you want like a robotic kind of sound for some kind of effect in the background. Oftentimes in the demos I've seen online, people set it at 20, but when I use the grain delay, it becomes still too choppy and you can't really tell what you're, what's being said, especially if you're gonna use it in a game. So I move it up to 40. It uses more CPU, but uh, if you got a good machine, you're gonna be just fine and we're barely hitting the CPU here. This is an eight core Mac. Here we go with the demo again. 40 bands, with 40 bands, you can almost hear pitches if I sing. So you can hear a pitch kind of slide around within 40 bands, and that's very useful. So now we're going to go over to the grain delay, and I'm going to bring that in. Oh, wait. I apologize. Next step is the format control, where you can get some really creepy, like, child voices and stuff. And, of course, the typical low-end demon voice. Okay, here we go. Let's <laughs> Yeah, that's the creepy baby voice. It took me a minute. I went too far from it. And another thing, I'm using a trigger finger, and they just don't line up on zero a lot. So you get as close as you can. Now I'm going to add the grain delay to it. Here comes more vocoder again. And we're going to now add the creepy uh, grain delay kind of thing. It really can split it up into huge chunks. The bigger the chunks, the harder it is to understand what's being said through the vocoder. That's why 40 bands on the vocoder is more useful. And also with the grain delay, you can create that creepy child sound. Here we go. Let's go back to zero here. <laughs> it went too far. 
So that you heard the creepy baby. And we'll bring in the ping pong delay, which we can do right here. I'm adjusting it so you can see I'm at one right now. But when you go to two, which is what I prefer, it creates that kind of um, background chanting weirdness with everything. Without some forest floor, it just doesn't sound right. So let's get the whole effect going. And then the last thing I'll show you is how to, what I do with the freeze effect. Ping pong, forest floor. There you go. Just a little bit so that you can get that kind of ambience of somebody talking in the background. And we're going to bring in the uh, cranes. Take them higher. Now the creepy teenager. There we go. And now we're going to take the form it down to get to the creepy glow end guy. Here it is. If you can tell what I'm saying, that's good. Another important aspect of map mode is to go here and to the macro mappings and to set min maxes. You'll find that the minimum of zero might not be exactly what you really want. Here's formant. I've got it to a negative 15. I can take it all the way down to negative 36. I don't want to do that. It just doesn't sound good. So 36 to negative 36. But beyond negative 15, it gets too low. You can't hear it anyway. So I just set the minimum at the audible range that's comfortable for the effect. And you're going to want to do those kind of things too. And hopefully I've stayed on the screen long enough that you can see what I set. So you can set it yourself. I'm going to put a link to the synth in the description of the video so you can download it right away but uh if you watch the video you can build it yourself that's more fun okay i hope this was useful it's my first video kind of broken up but uh with practice everything gets better thanks for watching <laughs>